going smoother. And, and look, not every deal is going to be smooth, but we iron out those wrinkles when we have people that are vetted and committed um, you know, to the cause and, and all on the same page. Um, you know, that, that being said, what, what are we seeing uh, in the market right now? Well, at least from our end, the last two weeks have been, um, we've been seeing an increase. You know, we've been seeing that the volume has picked up. There has been more deals coming in. I think people are moving around and, um, you know, we have to do that cautiously. So for everyone out showing houses, you know, I can only ask that you, you know, take care of yourselves and your clients because as a whole, we need to make sure that we, we keep ourselves healthy and smart. And although we are kind of flattening the curve, you know, there's a, there is a concern that this may start to spike up a little bit. So the good news is people are seeing some, some increase um, in traffic. And I think people are, are feeling a little better and getting out. On the legal side, as these deals are coming in, we're putting provisions that allow uh, adjustments for things um, in the sort of uh, COVID environment. So we're requiring, although we would expect it, but we are requiring courtesy extensions and understanding. So we're putting clauses in uh, that protect both the buyer and the seller, depending on the, the transaction of what side we're on. But we're putting language in that basically says, we understand not everything is the full capacity. Not everyone is moving as quickly and as expeditiously as we used to. So we expect a certain level of understanding and if there needs to be an extension the parties are aware of that and it, it may very well come to pass these days so that's one thing we're putting in the contract um you know also on the selling end certificates of occupancy co's and closing out permits building departments not up to full speed there yet uh, depending on the municipality some things are we have to set up an escrow for some things have a modified approach in terms of how the inspection can go. So, um, you know, those are two of the main things that we are doing, but uh, I would love to field any particular questions that you may have um, that I might be able to help with them, you know, fire away anything that you may be dealing with or just questions in general. All right, great. Well, hopefully there are some questions. There's a little feedback there, Elise. Is that from Frank's or is that from somebody else? I think it. I think it might be Frank's. His your audio might be a little loud on your computer. Uh, I can lower that down. Is that better? So, yeah, it sounds a little better. So we have one of the top attorneys in the area. Um, he normally charges nine hundred dollars an hour to answer questions. So you can you can have your questions answered today for for free. Anybody have any questions at all? You know, it could even be if you're working on a deal and you have a question and you want a, a, a top attorney's opinion. Any, anything you'd like to know? Lori is raising her hand. Lori, you're already on the panel. You're not allowed to talk twice today. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Lori. I unmuted you. Uh, am I unmuted? Hi. Frank, so I'm just curious when, can you hear me? I can hear yes. you, yeah. Uh, if there's multiple offers, a situation and it's highest and best, and then it's closed out and offer is accepted, are you uh, able to receive an offer after that like if an agent says can i have the attorney the seller's attorney and send an offer directly to you has that uh, in, happened so in in the multiple offer situation um we are ha we, we do both so we're certainly happy to take those offers in and then discuss them with the agent and and the seller um other times you know if the agent wants to collect those bids and then kind of discuss them with the seller and, and keep our office in the loop. We're able to do that too. So it's really a preference for client uh, and, and agent, you know, we're, we're happy either way. No, I mean, mostly um, in attorney review, if uh, somebody wants to still submit an offer directly to the seller's attorney, um, do you allow that? Yes, we, we do. Um, but again, if it's, if it's an offer, um, that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be entertained, okay. but sometimes I guess um, that is a strategy to get that, make sure that offer does get presented, um, you know, in an effort to get it to the seller. So, okay. you know, we, we never stop any of that, you know, um, okay. we, of course the approach of leave no stone unturned is always good. So, you know, it's, it's, presented, it's, it's on the table and then we can address it accordingly. So no problem. Okay. Great. Thank you.
No problem. All right, cool. Um, any other questions for Frank? Anybody yes. have a deal they're working on? They, oh, yes. Crystal has a question. I have a question. Hi, my name is Crystal Chen. Um, my question, are you doing the virtual closing or what do you do closing? Frank? I'm sorry, what was the first part? Virtual are you closing? doing the virtual closing or you just do, how do you do closing? Yes, so we are doing that now, um, you know, especially with our partner um, with Carnegie Title when we are on the buyer's side. Um, Carnegie does have an office space in Oradell that we've been using a lot and it's sort of, it's cleaned and it's secure. So um, a lot of times the buyers are going to the Carnegie office in Oradell, it's sort of central for the county. Um, uh, excuse me, the Keller Williams office uh, with Carnegie title that came out backwards, um, and which is kind of central. So with Carnegie title's closer going to the Keller Williams office in Oradell, um, we can do one of two things, you know, and it depends on the buyer. A lot of times we're reviewing things by Zoom in advance of that actual closer. Um, sometimes we're actually Zooming or FaceTiming into that room. Um, but, you know, we're, we're probably going to do some kind of hybrid going forward, I think, because, um, you know, we used to just do everything in person. And I think we've all, we're all seeing that we don't necessarily need to sit down every step of the way. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes. You know, uh, of course, we like the personal interaction, but if we can service customers quicker and more accommodating virtually, we're, we're going to be doing both going forward. Excellent. Can I have one more question? Could I have one more question, please? Sure, sure. About conditional seal, how do you do it? Can, so a conditional seal, CO? If we can't get, yes, if we can't get the inspection due to the building department um, uh, from COVID, you know, not, not doing internal inspections or complete inspections, what we will do is uh, generally escrow some seller's funds in to, and generally you have to have the building department's permission as well. So we need the partic uh, participation uh, of all the parties in the transaction. Uh, when do you question. apply that yeah. transition? I mean. Well, it, it depends. If we know in the very beginning what the building department is doing, then we may incorporate that into our, our rider, you know, in our attorney review. Okay. Got However, it. it's always changing, you know, that's rapidly changing. So we're addressing it through the transaction, um, but generally we will escrow. Okay, got it. Thank you. My pleasure. Frank, were you serious when you said the first question was free, but you're going to charge for the second one? Does that mean Crystal is going to be billed? I mean, you know, we, as a preferred attorney, we, we let it slide. I mean, any other okay. Zoom call, I'd be running a tab, but not, not tonight. Okay, it looks like... Uh, Rosa has a question. Yes, hi Al, hi Frank. Um, so I watched your video um, this morning from May 29th uh, about the one agent that showed a family with two children that didn't have a mask or just shared the gloves. Um, my concern was one thing to ask is um, in, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna have a new listing and with the whole new changes, I just wanna be careful with everything, what's going on. And I was wondering, is there a, a maximum number, like if only two people can come into the listing or tell the agent you can only bring a maximum of two people in to see the condo or the house? There's, is there a limit to the amount of people to come in? I will defer that to Sally Ponchak, who's our broker extraordinaire. She looks like she's jogging again in San Francisco there. Um, but I believe that the order from the governor it says, just one agent, one buyer, but I, I could be totally off. Sally, are you, are you, can you hear me? Sally, are you there? Sally, you got to unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, so I thought you were in charge of unmuting Elise. I didn't know I had to do that too. Yeah, I couldn't unmute her. She had to give permission. Gee, I got to do everything. I can't just unmute. Her. They actually ask the person for permission now. You can't just turn on their audio. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, it is a one-on-one -on -one showing situation. One-on-one -on -one has been interpreted by the governor 
to mean that someone can come with a spouse, but you're really not supposed to be bringing kids, aunts, uncles, friends um, along with you. It, it really is pretty strict that it should just be, you know, someone and their partner or spouse or one person. And that, Sally, so that's just have, in the house at one time. If you brought an extra right. adult, like I, an uncle that had to go in, he would just, you'd have to show it to the spouse, then show it again to the uncle, I assume, right? Right, exactly, exactly. You can work around it in that way, but, um, you know, best thing, easiest thing is if the people can leave their kids at home with a babysitter or something. And to add what you just said, Sally, is what happens in the case that, let's say another, like I have a lockbox and an agent doesn't follow that rule that's showing it to their client, kind of like what happened with this one family that had a, um, a door cam. Well, you, you can't be held responsible for that if you've put it in your showing instructions and you have reiterated that to the the realtor who's going to be showing it you've gone through that with them again and and explained you know what the showing protocol is that everyone has to wear a mask and gloves and you know they can't it can just be two people going in have we sent to every agent like is there a set thing that we want you know that they should to protect themselves be putting in their listing um, I, that out I, know, I know I sent it out to, you know, the agents that I'm the broker for, and I believe all the other brokers sent the same thing or a similar thing. So it has gone out. We can send it again. Would you mind sending that to Joanne, if you can remember, uh, and just ask her to send it out to the other brokers? Sure. I mean, have sure. the broker sending it out to everybody? because. I think that would make it easier if it was just like a cut and paste, you know, put it in every listing, it would make it easier. Right, right, yeah. And the other thing that they must do before you can confirm the appointment is they need to have the buyer sign the COVID waiver. Got That's it. a really key part of this too. D does that answer your question, Rosa? Yes, thank you, Al, Sally, and Frank. Are you, which uh, market center are you in? Uh, ten to fly. Ten to fly. Okay. Yeah, Jack should should have that, but we'll we'll send it out to you again as well. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions for Frank? I have a question. Okay. Okay. Oh, can I? Oh, I'm open. I totally forgot. <laughs> um, you know, it happened to me very recently. I had this listing, and then I got an offer. It was my only offer at that time, and Right on the provision section, um, the agent wrote, she had in writing there that it would be, every other offer would be a backup offer. So we started the attorney review and then right that day when we started, another offer came in. It was a better number, it was a better deal, but it was a better situation for my client. So I, I, I said, listen, I have to send this in. I have to obviously present this to my client because it did come in. Now, my question was, what do I do? You know, I had this offer that, you know, she said this, the agent actually said to me, you know, we put in the contract, we're not allowed to, every other offer would be a backup offer. So it was really a question that I had to really reach out to Sally, I remember last week, and um, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. Uh, how, have you ever experienced this? And how do you recommend, do we tell the agent to remove it before we have everything signed and submit it? Well, you know, it's funny. So we get this question, believe it or not, more, more often than you would think. And, and the reason is, it, from a legal standpoint, it, it's, it's pretty ineffective language, and here's why. When that initial contract is signed, it's a non-binding contract. So anything that's written there is subject to being tossed out in attorney review. So when we are in attorney review, again, these terms are still still fluid. They're they're not they're not set yet, and they're and they're not firm. Um, so saying that 
the property will continue to be shown for backup offers, or sometimes we see statements that the property will not be shown during an attorney review. You know, this is some good faith language to, to try to set the parties at ease, uh, especially a buyer, when we have that language. But again, since it's non-binding, in attorney review, we can scrap it. So what happens is, um, if we come through attorney review, we're under a firm contract. The property really can't be shown and sold out from underneath the buyer at that point anyway. So it's really that language is applicable only during that attorney review period. And I, and I say it's kind of ineffective legally because like I say, there's no way to bind anybody to it. But when those scenarios present themselves where they say it's for a backup offer, but then that, that offer is so appealing that a seller says, hey, it's more money, um, you know, legally, there's absolutely no reason that you could not bounce off the current deal and go to that higher offer. You know, the caution, of course, is to your professional, you know, word, your professional rep representations that you make, because agents don't forget that. Um, you know, attorneys don't forget that. And, you know, your, your professional image is, is everything in this business, whether it's mortgage, legal, uh, real estate, you know, whatever angle you're playing in the process, you know, your rep you know, your your representations have to be honest and, and straightforward. And look, you can never control what a client does. So if they're gonna bounce off the deal, explaining that to the other agent and explaining how it happens, we do it as attorneys. Sometimes we think we have a deal and then it unravels or it pivots in a different direction. So legally, again, perfectly fine to adhere to it or to kind of toss it out but just be careful because a lot of times that can burn a bridge or leave someone feeling like they were slighted or something underhanded was done which may not be illegal by any stretch but maybe not good in a professional light thank you sure does that answer your question chris it does yeah thank you all right great um all right any other questions for frank all right well thank you very much frank really appreciate you coming on and uh if anybody's looking for an excellent attorney, uh, please uh, look up Frank Uzi. Frank, do you want to um, throw your contact info in the chat if there's anybody who wants to reach out to you about a deal or a lease? Can you do that? Yep, I'll do that right now. No problem. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Al. So, Appreciate you having me on. Oh, thank you. This is really helpful. Um, I wouldn't have been able to answer those questions. Um, Elise, is there a way, so we have uh, two, uh, Chris and Lori are gonna be the, the panelists today. Mm. Is there a way to make, like, set it up so that, you know, we just see them when, when we're asking questions or no? No, so we can't do that with both of them, unfortunately. It, okay, all right, cool. All right, you guys will have to look at me then. Um, all right, so. Uh, it so it's like a grid view in the upper right on your screen on the black box. It will let you switch between speaker view and uh, gallery. So no, I know way, I can do that for me. I was wondering if we could just be like, oh, you know, okay. just right. them, everyone sees them, you know, so they can see who's talking. But gotcha. um, but in speaker view, it just shows you whoever's talking anyway. So it kind of does that anyway, right? right. Um, all right, cool. So Lori, Chris, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Doing good. Good? Doing good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, maybe if we can just start out, uh, let's say Lori, go first, you know, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself. Most people know both of you because you're famous in the real estate world, but there might be a couple people that are new and don't know about you. Just tell us a little bit about yourself as we get started. Sure. So um, I started real estate in December of 2014. I joined Keller Williams. Um, I met with all the other agencies in the area and I thought that Keller Williams really had the best platform and the best place for me to grow. Uh, and I've never looked back. Awesome. So you started, you said in 2014? December of 2014, yeah. What did you do before that? I was uh, in sales in the garment industry. So um, sales driven, uh, always commission based. Got it, okay. So that probably made it a little bit easier, I'm guessing, right? Do you find like the transition's yeah. a lot easier since you're already in sales? That's right, yeah. Because in, right. in essence, it is a sales job, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Chris, um, how do you pronounce your, that's not your full name. Right? <laughs> My full name is Christula. It's like a very old traditional Greek name. So um, yeah, it's a lot of people have a hard time pronouncing it. So that's why everybody just cut it short. Everybody calls me Chris. Which one um, do you prefer? 
I like Chris. It's okay. easy and it's simple. Yeah. Um, I started in 2015 of September. And um, before that, I actually did property management. But many might not know that I actually moved here in this country in 1993, right after high school. So English is my second language too, even though I've been here for 27 years. Um, and um, property management allowed me to work with like tenants and obviously with people. I did work at a little coffee shop in town, Hawthorne. So I did have a lot of people that I knew in town and, and I loved people. So I think that one day, just very accidentally, I was showing the building for, for rental purposes. And um, this older man who, um, who was also a broker said to me, you're going to be great in real estate. So I took a chance and um, got my license in the spring of 2015. But because I had my kids and they were still like my son was young, I decided to wait a little bit. So I started in September, which was the fall market. And it was kind of like not the right time, I would say. I should have probably started in, in April. would have probably helped me a little bit more. But I'm glad I did it. A lot of people also don't know is I was that old man that discovered you, right? <laughs> no, I thought it was. No, me. no. <laughs> I never ended up going to that broker. So I never yeah. started there, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, all right, cool. Moving along. So a lot of what we've been talking about, and hopefully in a, in a couple weeks, it'll be as we move forward, we'll be talking about the crisis less. But for either or both of you, how has your business changed? You know, or how, how you do business, how has how you do business changed during the crisis? If, you know, what, what does it look like today versus pre-COVID? Are you having to make more phone calls, you know, do things differently? Like, what, what, what's different? How have you guys adapted? Um, I'll start with you, Lori. Okay. Um, so I'm home more. I'm in my office more uh, because we're not doing the broker tours. So I'm not out seeing the inventory on a regular weekly basis. Uh, so I've gotten used to, actually, I, at first I thought it was going to hurt me, but now I actually see it as uh, a definite opportunity because it allows me to lead Jen consistently every day, um, Monday through Friday, when I used to find, especially in the spring market, every Tuesday and Friday, I spent running around looking at the houses and I'm finding it's really just um, forced me to make calls consistently. And I remember uh, one of my coaches said, don't worry about getting into every house, just lead generate, that's your number one. And I, I have to know the inventory, I have to get inside. And I can only do it from 11 to two uh, during broker tour. And I have to say, it's really helped my pipeline because I'm on the phone you know, pounding the phones, talking to people, and it's definitely made a difference. So when I, when this whole COVID thing happened, I looked at my plan and I, I planned it down. Um, and now four or five weeks in, I've gone back in and put my, my plan back to where it was. When you say your plan, like your goal for your my goal, goal for, for this year. year. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're thinking you'll end the year, you know, on target as if this, the whole thing never happened? That would that'd be pretty awesome. Honestly, I think, you know, there are so many buyers out there right now and there's so much opportunity. Um, I think we, if we all just show up, we're going to have a great year. This is going to be probably one of the best real estate years I'll ever have. You know, you bring up something, I don't even know what the answer is for it, but when I sold real estate, I never went on broker tours because I felt like, you know, that, that was three hours that I could do more productive stuff. But the flip side is if everybody thought like that, then nobody would come to your listings. I know that's an important thing. So I don't know what the, you know, what the solution there is, you know, um, because I, I guess do, do sellers still get upset if, you know, if they, they have a broker open, I mean, pre COVID and they don't get a lot of showings, is that an issue or is that less of a, a deal anymore? Well, it's almost like this is the new norm. Uh, the less people that are in pe sellers homes, it's, the new norm and we're explaining that these are the restrictions we have and it's certainly not preventing people from getting their homes sold. So I think when everything is lifted again and there is freedom to go in and out of people's homes, we can say um, there's been some great success stories without broker tours because point. people are still selling their homes. Um, 
and they're selling them quickly with multiple offers. So it, in my mind, it hasn't affected the market. You are so smart. Um, all right, Chris, um, what about you? How are things changed for you during the, the crisis? I think that, you know, the last couple of years, I, I definitely, my goal was to work smarter, but not harder. And I think we, I watched the Zoom meeting once that they said the same thing. Now we have to work smarter and harder. So it definitely requires a lot more phone calls, a lot more, you know, attendance to your, you know, reaching out to your clients, your past clients, your sphere of influence, you know, definitely affected me in the beginning. I wanted to do my part and just kind of stay home. I think a lot of a lot of us did that. And then three, four weeks into it, and I'm like, you know what, my clients don't want to go, you know, my buyers want to go out there. So we obviously I adopted like everybody else into the whole new wearing a mask and going out there and showing homes, taking listings. I have to say it helped me when I attended and I was there texting and calling people those three, four weeks, I got two extra listings because of uh -huh. those calls. So yeah, somebody's mother was selling or somebody's friend was selling and it really helped me. So I think that if you, if there's anybody out there that maybe it's doubting it or, you know, that you have a question or maybe just reach out and start the conversation with, you know, thinking of you, I miss people, you know, and, and you, you're going to have a success story. That's awesome. Um, is there anything, you know, we talk to a lot of different agents from KW, from other companies, and there's some people who are struggling sort of with their mindset. You know, they kind of got into a funk during this crisis. Is there anything that you guys are doing to kind of keep yourself motivated? I know in the past you could, you know, you could go in the office and socialize with other people, go to a great class, meet with Rasham, and she would get you all fired up. Like what, what, um, what are you guys doing to kind of keep positive and keep your mindset going during this time? You Chris, want me to go first? Either. Is that okay? Chris, we'll switch halfway through yeah. and you can go yeah. first. Uh, well, so every morning I'm really grateful to James, James Shaw because his 8 a.m. phone call, um, it's very easy to sleep in right now because the kids don't have to get up and you really don't have to get up, but 8 a.m. there's a, a, a James Shaw call that I consistently get on and I find it to be amazing. Uh, he's highly motivating. He talks about what we're dealing with and it's a quick in and out and he gets me pumped up in 30 minutes. Um, you know, getting coached from, I think one of the best coaches in the country and um, I'm ready to go start the day. He's, he's pretty awesome. Is that the bold pivot you're talking about? Yeah. The morning, the daily. Yep. Elise, 8 to 8.30. I highly sure recommend it. Everybody has that link. Can you throw that link in the chat? Yeah, I will. Sorry, Lori, go ahead. I, I cut you off there. He, he's so motivating and there's all top agents from around the country on the call. And I've just had so many great takeaways and it's the perfect way to start the day. Awesome. How about you, Chris? Um, I'm more into the, I believe in the five energy areas that I feel like it's even in the Gary Keller's book. So I feel like for me, I just got to get on the Peloton. I think I got Rachel hooked on that too. And she, um, it's something that I gets me going. I feel like, you know, I think I clear my head. So I start with that and then I go have my coffee. I check on my emails. I respond to my emails. Um, if I, if I want to watch like one of the, um, the pivot shift, uh, you know, that I miss maybe in the morning, I can watch it later or during that time. Um, but it's very motivating for sure. It's just, I need that energy on my end and I get it a lot from the working out. Rachel, very competitive. She's been bragging about how she's <laughs> crushing you on Peloton. Is that true? She said she started later with blowing past you. I think she had the Peloton before me because I think I got my Peloton in February. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think we motivate each other, which is good accountability partners. I right? had left the Peloton. I think it was all credit to Chris. She put me back on it and she just said, listen, even if you do 10 minutes a day, do it. And I gave her a big shout out on Saturday because I did a 45 minute ride and I was so proud of myself. I texted Chris yeah. and said, it's all thanks to you that I feel great. Wow. I sweat it out. And just like Chris, I need that energy to mm -hmm. pump me up in the morning. And I'm grateful to Chris for that. So thank you, Chris. Oh, thank you. So when I was thinking about what I would ask you guys today and what could be a theme, what did you guys have in common? What was interesting 
you know, I asked you guys and I, it was actually a surprise. You guys do big numbers in sales and I was surprised that neither one of you have a team. Normally when you do the volume that you guys do, you're on a team. So I thought, you know, a good thing to kind of explore with you guys, how do you do, you know, so much business as a solo agent? And is that, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Is that by design or, you know, do you just prefer working as a solo agent or just haven't gotten around to building a team? Because it would seem like at the level of business you guys are doing, it's a lot of work for one person. So can you talk about that team versus solo? Lori, can sure. you go first? Um, so I rely a lot on our uh, staff at the office. Uh, when things get a little manic for me, um, I, I defer to Reese and she's been a huge help for me. Elise um, has always been there to help me with some tech stuff and listing presentations and, and managing my command challenges. So between our in-house people, um, you know, I just hand them off uh, a lot of my stuff and it's been great. And Lynn Gransky, God bless her because um, she helps me as well. Um, you know, so it's not necessarily that you're really a solo agent. You just don't have a team in the sense that we normally talk about it, but you're utilizing people within the right. market center as sort of to fill in some of the stuff. I have a, my, my own team. I think I'm yeah. surrounded by great agents and um, I, I rely on my fellow agents that I've kind of made my circle around. Do you feel like there's a type of client that, you know, prefers that, that they, you know, it's, is it an advantage sometime that you're the solo agent and you're always going to be the one that they can contact and you're not, you know, saying talk to my buyer's agent or talk to my admin or, or just that not really come up? You know, I never sell myself as a solo agent because mm -hmm. I let them know that I have a monster KW team behind me. Um, yeah. I've even had people uh, communicate directly with Reese. Uh, so I yeah. never sell myself as a solo agent. Um, for all they know, I could have an army behind me. You do. You yes, have I do. an army behind you. Uh, what about you, Chris? Same kind of question. Um, you know, I never really got into like, think about creating a team. I mean, there's times where I need the help, but I try to manage my time a little bit better. You know, there are definitely, you know, between family and work, there's always time, more time needed, but I try to balance it. I mean, if I wake up early in the morning or even if I stay up a little late at night and I have to do some paperwork together recently, because I've been a KW agent only since like last February, um, I... I hired Reese too, just to help me out, organize my database and help me out on certain things um, that I need help with. But other than that, I've been just pretty much trying to get everything accomplished on my own. I like the fact that I can call sellers on myself. I think what, you know, yes, we do have a whole team behind us, but I think a lot of our clients nowadays could be a little bit demanding too, you know? They like to be on the phone with you kind of constantly, or they want to be re reminded that, you're thinking of them. Hey, I know you might have questions. I'm here for you. Um, so maybe it's in the plans in the future. Not now, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, okay. That makes sense. Um, one of the things when I'm on any, any class or Zoom, I always want to like take notes and come away with something that, you know, I can do right away, like a tip or a tool or some kind of recommendation. If there is some tip that each of you could give to an agent that something you're doing that's really helping your business, whether it's, you know, anything at all that you think that would help other people grow their business. Um, what would that be? That one thing, Lori? Um, well, the one thing that I'm doing is just purposely making my calls every day. Um, and I think when you start digging deeper with people and you find out, you know, why their business is not where they want it to be is they're not really showing up. They're not plugging in um, and they're not doing the activities that some of the agents who are doing really well are doing. I, I don't think it's a big secret, to be honest. Um, I feel like you're looking right at me when you say that. Are you trying to say I'm not doing the activities <laughs> no. I, I need to do? Okay. No. So that's a great point. I mean, there are all these things you can kind of do around the edges that help, but really the base of everybody's business has to be that, you know, two or three, depending on who you are, four hours of Legion. You can have the best technology and the coolest team and, you know, the best social media, but if you're not, you know, 
making those contacts. I think it's very hard to, to grow a big business. Sort of the best advice is the most boring advice. Just do your lead gen. Not saying your advice is boring, but really that's, that's sort of the bedrock. Like you got to start there and then you can, you know, earn the right to build out with some of the bells and whistles. But if you're not reaching out to people, you, I don't see how you generate sales, you know, what, what so about you? Go ahead. The one thing that I do have found is on the calls, I, um, I sit with a big question mark on a notepad because I find that I've shifted how I have conversations with people and I purposely ask more questions than tell them things. And that was something that came from one of the coaching sessions that we had. Um, I actually think it was a pivot, bold pivot, or it was, um, it was one of the coaching classes that we did. And it was all about asking really great questions. Um, have you read this book? There you, you go. It? Great, great. Good leaders. Ask great questions. It's all about asking questions. It's really good. John Mack. So I've, it's a habit that I've now tried to, you know, remind myself and, and break. Instead of trying to tell somebody something, I try to shift it into ask the same thing I'm trying to tell them, but start with it as a question. That's great advice. Thank you, Lori. You're Chris? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same. I mean, your phone is your business. Just, you know, get it, go through your contacts, call everybody, text everybody, care, show that you care, you know. That's the most important thing. It's not about business. You know, don't look at people as like, oh my God, it's a potential transaction. Um, and then the other thing that I want to say that I do, um, I reward a referral. Like if somebody from my town said, oh, you know, so-and-so is selling, you know, doesn't have to be big, could be a small like, Starbucks card, you know, but write up a little note, a little card and send it over, you know, anyone, if it, one of your friends mentions somebody that might be selling or looking to buy, just reward that and just remind them that you are thankful basically for doing that. That's great advice. Great advice. Um, thank you. Um, all right, let's see. Um, so one of the things we're seeing out there in the marketplace is, um, other companies are coming to KW agents and they'll offer like a one-time check. You know, they'll pay somebody $20,000 to, you know, leave the, the company. So, you know, we think we have a much better system all around. And just if we're talking about financially, you know, we think a much better deal is passive income that'll pay you year after year after year. Whereas, you know, if you can earn $20,000 every year for the next 20 years or get a $20,000 check once from these other companies, the $20,000 a year makes sense. So, we have lots of agents at KW who are on more than 100% split because they're earning more than the $40,000 in their passive income between title, insurance, disappearing cap, you know, profit share. Um, so I'm putting myself out there a little bit because I don't know where either one of you guys are with, with passive income. But, you know, even if you're not there, maybe it's a good time to, to talk about it. But are you guys taking advantage of that stuff? Are you you know, part of the title, the home insurance, the profit share, the disappearing cap, and how's that working out for you? Um, Lori, sorry, with you, Lori. Uh, so last year was a breakthrough year for me uh, with passive income. I recruited, well, Rasham, uh, and I helped bring 18 agents over to KW. Um, wow. And so in my first downline. Glad I, glad I threw that question in there. <laughs> Uh, and I have to say, um, you know, if you project the numbers that can generate $80,000 for me when everything is back to normal. Um, and I have, I'm very grateful to Rasham for being as great a partner. Uh, I gave her a goal of adding 10 people into my uh, downline and we blew that number away. So, um, yeah. So how does that work, Rasham? You're on the line. How do, how do they sign up? Is that just because you you like Lori the best or can anybody sign up and, and have you help them recruit like that? So true. I just love my Lori Jordan. Um, I think, you know, when Lori came in as an ALC member and we always set our goals on growing their downline, their uh, business on how much they want to increase. So we asked what their goals are and then I double it or triple it <laughs> and I push them and make them uncomfortable and um, Lori was one of the best partners I think people think just by giving a name they can grow a downline but it's it's really what Linda McKissick said and what Lori act 
actually follow us is you have to show them the value. You have to give them compliment. They have to, they have to buy into you. You have to constantly nurture them and show them what KW is all about and not have that commission breath. And I think that's what Laurie did. She worked hard on, you know, bringing these agents into KW and, and here she is. I talked to an agent over the weekend who went to, uh, left KW, went to a company that has a similar, not a similar, but, but has a profit sharing system and, the, 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 and they're coming back to KW. The distinction they made is that, you know, this other company, they became the recruiter. And as much as Lori is involved, I imagine having you help takes a lot of that work off of Lori. When you go to some of these other companies that don't have team leaders, you wind up spending your whole time recruiting and then your business drops off. So I'm sure you know, you're helping a lot with that, Rasham, I assume, or at least you should be, Rasham. You can't make Lori do it all. So I guess if there's anybody else from the Bridgewood Market Center and you want to sign up to add 18 people to your downline, reach out to Rasham because she's not allowed to play favorites. Everybody, everybody gets 18 people uh, starting today. Um, are, are you doing anything else with besides the profit share to do the other stuff, the home and auto, the title, all that? Yep, so um, I refer, I use our preferred attorney list um, and it's not because I just use it. I really think we have some of the greatest attorneys on that list that keep us in the loop as we're doing a transaction. And uh, I think Brian Allen, uh, he's awesome. I mean, he calls me when he receives the title uh, order and just lets me know, thank you. Uh, he's a partner in my mind and I, I, I feel very confident when I know that Carnegie's on that deal. Um, and then for the home and auto, Tim Fox has been fabulous. We, you know, I just, as part of my system that when we go under contract, I connect the buyer with him and I have multiple shares for Carnegie Home. Um, and I have many shares for the title. Um, so when I talk to agents and they tell me what their splits are, um, I my splits are, over a hundred in the last two years. So I don't know any, any office that's offering that. So I hope everyone can hear that. So, so Lori's earning more from passive income than she's paying K, KW. So we're basically paying her to work here. So when people hear, oh, that company offers a 90% split, but Lori's on 112%, you know, it's kind of, kind of hard to beat that. And this isn't a commercial for that because we want you to stay at the companies because, you know, our goal is to help you, you know, get financially independent, live a better life. When you get to the point when money is just sort of, you know, rolling in and it shows up in your mailbox and you're not having to do anything for it, you know, it, it gives you a level of freedom and comfort, especially during times like this. You know, a lot of our agents was, you know, they're getting checks from home and auto, they're getting checks from profit share, they're getting checks during this time when it's hard to go out and, and sell homes. So uh, there's, there's one thing I will, I will say, there's nothing better than getting a hundred percent check and you never want to get anything else. So KW, you guys have made it so that we can get 100% checks every 12 months of the year. Um, um, I did want to add- Another thing I want to say though is you made a good point. I always talk about the passive income, you know, because to me that's, you know, resonates with people most quickly. But I think what you said makes a lot of sense that people don't think about, you know, we, our approved attorneys are approved attorneys because they've been with us for years. They work with us. Carnegie Title, we actually own the insurance company. We actually own. So the advantage is not just the passive income. We have so much more influence with them because we work so much with them. You know, when you go and try to call a title company where you don't know the guy and get something done, you can't. But, you know, you can pick up the phone and call Brian Allen. He works for our company. You have so much more control over your deals when you work with our people because they're, they're part of the same team, you know. I'm sorry, Rachel, I interrupted you. I just wanted to say, like, Laurie is not paying a cap to Keller Williams. Last year, she didn't pay a cap. This year, she's not paying a cap. And next year, she's not paying a cap. But the next three years, <laughs> Laurie has earned 100% of her commissions because wow. of everything, disappearing cap and bringing in, you know, agents. And, and I don't like to say recruiting because I think she's been a part of changing people's lives. And some of those agents are today on Ask Al. And, you know, I don't think they disagree that this was one of the best moves they made. And she helped them change their lives. Wow. And she, she always looks out for me, too, which I that's appreciate. The, very that's much. the most important thing. 
I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on make this an advertisement for passive income, but I also want to, you know, people to realize that the dollar amount that that is. Lori, as a capper, every year would be paying 40000 to us. So if we're saying for three years, she doesn't pay a cap for getting insurance, all the other things, just in the disappearing cap, it's like writing her a $120,000 check, you know, that these Thank other, you, Al. you mm -hmm. know, it's crazy. So Lori's loaded. So if anybody <laughs> has more money, I think right it's now, you get her up. Um, Chris, I, I don't know if you can top that, but uh, what's your... No, no not, not, not at all. But I try. I mean, I, I'm just newer, too. I mean, it's been a year, uh, over a year, but I, I, I have to say I'm honored that I was able to buy stocks into the um, home and auto. So, and oh. I'm headed that way, slowly. <laughs> all right. Get, put Rachel to work. Give her some leads and have her recruit some people for you so you can be like, Lori... Um, I'm going through asking all these questions, but certainly we want to make this interactive. Does anybody uh, have a question for either Lori or Chris at this point? If not, I'll just keep moving on. Anybody? If I pause for a long time, somebody will ask. I have a question. All right. I knew it. Either. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Hi. Um, so I, I did put it in the chat, but the, one of the things that I'm finding as even though I'm like eight months in now and did finally list a house today and blah, 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 That's yeah, you. yeah, finally got stuff moving on and it, things are happening. Um, you know, but as a new agent, like not being able to, um, do open houses like meet people organically. I mean, I had another business, so I have like a whole pipeline and I'm okay with, cause I have a lot of people to reach out to and I'm going to be fine cause I'm old um, and been around, but I feel like some of the new agents, they're not finding the same resources that traditionally new agents have had in terms of meeting people and, you know, meeting agents, even at the office, how, you know, I mean, that's, you meet new agents at the office. I mean, even me, I met some people that I've connected to and, you know, at 11 o'clock at night and I'm like, oh my God, who can I ask this question? Let me see what Ira's doing, you know? And like, they don't, they're not getting that now, obviously because of COVID, but also because of the changes that are occurring and I think are going to go forward with kind of the open houses are going to be more like scheduled open houses for probably the foreseeable future. I feel like the opportunity to get, buyers on your own where you know they just walk into an open house and you introduce yourself i feel like there's some opportunity missing for the new agent again i'm not worried about myself i'll figure it out but i feel that in general i'm hearing some of that buzz and that frustration so i'm just bringing it up i don't know what to do like you know i don't know what the answer is but i think the agents that are the Lori jordans of the world and all you guys and whatever are going to rock it out of the park this year because that's where people are going to go. They're going to pick up the phone and where's Patty Davis? Where's, you know, they're going to, they're going to go to the ones that are out there because they're not meeting anybody else organically or whatever. Okay. I have an answer I to that. Let that be a limiting belief them. though, because, you know, especially for somebody like you, if you've been in business and you've been around, you, you have people that already know you already like you, you know, if you, you know, if you're constantly reaching out to them and you have a relationship with them, regardless of whether or not Lori has been doing it longer, if you have that relationship and that level of trust and you're reaching out to them, I, I, I think you have just as good a shot at you know, getting that business as somebody like Lori or Chris, just, it's just a matter of like they were saying, making those, those calls every day. Right. But yeah. Rasham, do you have any advice on, you know, I do see the point though. That's one. The other thing I would say is open house, you know, if there are 15 different ways, open houses is a very good one. That there are still, you know, there's still 14 more. But uh, Rachel, do you have any advice for, for new agents that are missing that open house opportunity? I mean, we talk about it, like even with the fact that you have to first have your database, like your sphere of influence and start making those care, compassion and common sense calls and then tap into our resources. One of the things that Steve Gendel brings up in all his classes is if you're, if you're a new agent and you don't have a listing you want to advertise, you just talk about a town like Ridgewood or Wyckoff or whatever, and you talk about, you know, there's a video you can create on command which shows the stats of what the town is and how many listings are active and how many in the contracts. And you can create an ad campaign to attract leads and then follow up and nurture. 
So you don't really have to have listings, but that's one way to generate some leads and continually do those calls once you start getting momentum in them. Yeah, I, I actually think it is a limiting belief because yeah. there are some newer agents, uh, Sanan, Alyssa, uh, they are crushing it and they are going to do amazing. Uh, they, they just have great energy. Um, they're showing up. They're, they're well, Robin has great energy too, just so you know. She's talking about other people. You know, I'll give an example, Robin. Patty Gurney has been diligently after Bold. She took Bold and she's fairly new. She's in the coaching program. She has been diligently making her care and compassion calls. And her June is going to be one of her best months. She has actually gotten a FISBO to list with her and she has been moving out of her comfort zone and making those calls, calling expires, calling FISBOs. Those are other avenues that you can explore if you don't have that you know, sphere of influence like the Jordans of the world do. But how do you grow Maybe that? You, you know, yeah. I just feel like um, it is definitely a limiting. I don't know if you did. Did you take bold, Robin? Again, I know I was taking so many things and I was just trying to catch up on, you know, what I'm have, I plan on taking it. But again, I'm doing the whole 10 things a day. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm working it. I'm going to, you're going to see some progress from me. About. Awesome. But let us what know. I'm saying is like, even Patty, I know Patty, we, you know, we've done some things for her. Um, she's older as well. So I was just pointing it out because I'm in the chat groups of the newbies. So yeah. I'm just pointing it out to you guys. And saying, and I find it too, like, I would like to, you know, I was doing open houses for people too. So it was nice to like two or three times a month. Can you do an open house for me? Sure. I'll do an open house for you. Or can you take over? Can you do this for me? Yeah. 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 I'll do that for you. I feel like there's like less opportunity for the new agents. That's all I'm saying. Like there's less opportunity uh, and, it, and it's fine. We're, I know for me, I'm fine. We're doing it. We're sitting, we're doing Lori Jordan. Like we're doing it. Like, and you're right. I feel like we're getting so much more accomplished in a way by not going all over the place. But one thing I wanted to ask about too, and since we're all here is how come we still don't send out, like, I know we're not doing open house, uh, realtor open houses anymore, but you know how we used to send out like um, our private listings? Are we just not doing those anymore? Like um, just the exclusives? Companies? Exclusives. Are we still sending out those emails and stuff like that? Like, ex ex like exclusives. I don't know. I feel like something's just, I don't, I honestly, I don't think that we've taken on, we usually sent it out every Friday. Uh, I don't think we've really had many people take new exclusives, but I can definitely check with that. Yeah. But what we're doing is we're trying to create a group on exclusives and coming soon that are private. And then we're now going to be introducing broker tours virtually for our agents to come in on Tuesdays and Fridays instead of going house to house. That's one of the things that have been in, in the world. Okay, that sounds great. Um, Randy had her hand up and also Amrita. Okay, just real quick. I don't know if you can stay on for a couple extra minutes, Rasham. I know you're busy too. I have to jump on the regional call at four. I have so a I four o'clock meeting out, but um, maybe so Sally, can be the co Sally, can you be the co-host? I have to. It's my, our meeting, our four o'clock as on the second. We have a hard stop. All right, so what was the last question then? I didn't uh, get to ask them anything I wanted to ask them. You guys are going to have to come back. <laughs> I feel like a talk show host. Okay, come back soon. We didn't finish. Ha, ha, ha. Um, um, I was just saying, oh, sorry. I thought I, I had my hand up. I thought oh, I didn't recognize. <laughs> sorry. I apologize. Quick question uh, for Lori and Chris then. Uh, just quickly, are you using um, campaigns or anything else to um, develop your lead source other than calling your sphere of influence, your past clients? You know, are you using any other avenues that you recommend? I, I don't pay for Zillow leads. I don't, I don't pay for anything. I don't pay for any leads, no. Chris? Um, I actually have done the paid campaign once, but I haven't had a chance to do that because every listing that I put on the market was gone really quickly. So I didn't even have to advertise it. I got some calls um, from the listings that I got, um, just straight up. I have not paid uh, for any other way on leads. I reach out to like past clients 
And like I said, I feel like some once in a while you get that one client that adores you and yeah, give you like leads over and over and over. <laughs> so reward that activity and they just keep coming. So it's always great to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks you rub it in our face. All your listings, they sell so fast. Now we all feel bad. <laughs> they just happen now. It's great. Um, all right. Four o'clock. La very last. Was there one more question? Did Kathy have a question, I think? I'm Kathy, I'm Annette? Question. Amrita, did you have a question? No, it wasn't a question. It was just feedback on the question that I think somebody else had about new agents. But we can talk offline. I didn't even have a question. Okay. Did Kathy have a question or no? Wernette? I, I answered. She just said oh, she'd answered. like the Zoom opens advertised if possible. Okay. All right. We have time for one last question. Anybody? All right. Well, thank you, uh, Chris. And thank you, Lori. You guys were very helpful. I only got through, I have a whole page and a half yeah. of questions. I got through like a third of it because. Everyone else has so many questions for you guys, and you're so interested. So we'll, we'll do this again. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, have a great day. Right. Take care.